which should tie out to the balance sheet, 926.25. Now let's do one more sales receipt so we can see them kind of grouped together. If I go back on over here and I make another one, let's make another simple one, another, another sales receipt. Let's say this one was customer, customer number three tab, save, and another cash payment. It's gonna go into undeposited funds and I'm just gonna make this the service item one to make it a simple one. So let's say the service item was, uh, was this is design service. I thought I made a ser service item one. And there's a 150, let's say we had two of those. So that comes up to 300. What's this going to do? It's sales receipt, it's gonna be increasing undeposited funds and the other side's gonna be going to the revenue. So let's go ahead and save that. Back to the balance sheet check it run it undeposited funds going into undeposited funds we now see the 300 and the 54 back on over the other side went to the income statement running it so in the income statement the service item we now have that added 300 for that one back so now the point is if i go back to the balance sheet if i take it out of undeposited funds and into the checking account I can use the deposit form to group those two items together. So I can then go back on over and say, okay, let's go into the drop down and make the bank deposit, which I typically can't just simply wait till it clears the bank feeds because when it clears the bank feeds, these two deposits will be combined together. So what I have to do when I go into the end of the night, when I make the physical deposit into the checking account, I'm gonna go in here and check both of these off so that now it goes into the checking account at $354. So when it comes through on the bank feeds, I can simply match it to the amount here, the bank feeds then helping me with the bank reconciliation process instead of actually recording a transaction. So if I say, let's record this, save and close, go to the balance sheet, run it that should be coming out of the undeposited funds you can see oh it didn't do it again hold on a sec i need to refresh it again give it a second give it a second quickbooks i thought you were quick quickbooks i thought you were quick what so this is going to be 54 ticking and tagging them off 300 minus the 300 and you can see them ticking and tying off but when it goes into the checking account it's going to show up at that one lump sum and so there it is at the 354 that's the that's the point so that that lump sum is what's going to show up on the uh on the bank statement so that when i go to the first tab when i go into my transactions when i go into my checking account and my bank feeds when I see this come through, it's not going to come through as two separate deposits, but instead that one deposit. So I don't want to go into my checking account again. I know I'm stressing this point because this happens fairly often. People get frustrated. You go in here and you have to tie out different things to match out to here. If you have a credit card too, they might take out fees, which means your deposit won't even match, right? So you have to make sure that you have some kind of system on a cash based system. If you collect cash, for those sales and you deposit it into the checking account you're gonna you can easily make the deposit based on the cash deposit that you made instead of one sale at a time if it's a credit card company then you have to come up with some kind of system that you can match the batching process of the credit card company taking it in out of undeposited funds and depositing it into the checking account in the same amount so that you don't end up with a mess when you either do the bank reconciliation and or the the bank feeds trying to match out the bank feeds to your actual uh deposits now note that so, so that's that now it's possible we might talk more about the bank feeds later that you could enter the sales receipt uh and put it into undeposited funds or something and then try to use the bank feeds to move it over to uh to the deposit to actually record a transaction we'll talk about that more on the bank feeds section but that's not like the normal process people would do also i just want to point out over here in the checking account that 
noticed like one of these deposits was the first way we did it was depositing the sales receipt directly and that would happen if you had just checks or something like that you can possibly do that but then you have a sales receipt in here as an increase as opposed to all the increases being deposits not a big deal but when for example we noticed that we could enter the receive payments as a deposit and we noticed that we could enter a deposit as a deposit and we now have the sale the re, the sales receipt that could be entered as an increase to the checking account so that means when you're sorting your checking account over here to try to look at increases to it you have not just deposits but now sales receipts and uh, re payment and receive payment forms and whatnot which can make it a little bit more tedious to deal with if you're trying to search for something then if you used a system where you make everything a deposit form and then all the increases are basically the deposit forms.